This week, we will continue our interview with Sabrina Sweary, and she talks about how she produced a major comedy album for Warner Brothers Records, and she also gives the scoop on her new podcast and her stand-up comedy, and how she knew she was a stand-up comedy, and making her mother proud. Ask, how did you end up producing Leader of the Band, one of his albums? Um, I produced the comedy side, Richie Zito. Produced the music side. Love Richie. And yes, Rich, Richie produced the music side, and it. This is exactly how it happened. We were on a flight. I don't remember where. Probably come, a flight from the East Coast back to the West Coast. Sam's in first class. I'm in coach with everyone else. Sam and Laker in first class, and he. Sam stumbles back, and you know the sweaty pirate, you know, right. do rag on. And he says uh, that he cannot produce his album. Like, what are, you, what are you talking about? He hands me a pillowcase of like 50 tapes. He says, you figure it out. Really? Yeah. So he, he had all these re shows recorded and you edited them together. Yeah, and the editing was um, a bit of a problem. But uh, when I sat down with him for the first, you know, editing session, like, you know, he here's where we're editing at this time marker, in this time marker, it was flawless. He didn't have one note. Yeah. But you have to remember, I was like 17. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It's so this was like, you know... A, a You're producing a major album for Warner Brothers Records. Yeah, I, I, and I'm sure that did occur to me. <laughs> But I really looked at it like this was like an essay. Okay. You know, because I'm still right out of high school. All right. So, yeah. So, this is just a, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. And I, it's not like I was, a, a, you know. It's a school project. Yeah, exactly. And I excelled there in those areas. I, I always assumed it was one show. It was, no, it wasn't. Sh thank you for thinking that. No, I, just, I, I listened to it last month. I always thought it was one show. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It was. We boiled it down. I, I had to boil it down to five shows that were taped in Las Vegas because it, Sam was on a, on a on his his summer vacation. Right. And uh, I could pull enough material from those five shows in Vegas, thankfully. Right. And we got it done. Cast the girls on the cover. Gotta love the cover. Love the cover's great. The cover is a so so people know what we're talking about. It was a spoof on the Last Supper instead right. of Twelve Disciples of Men. It was Twelve Women in Lingerie. I'm gonna show the uh, the, the album cover one. Uh, and the back one. side of it, so funny. Yeah. Because everyone had their butts yeah. out. And all of the girls except for two were actually really good friends of ours. Rebecca Sarzo, Rudy Sarzo's wife. Mm -hmm. Tommy Alridge, um, his wife. Susan, I think it was Susan. I haven't talked to her in a long time. Um, and they're from White Rada, Snake. Yeah. What? They're from White Snake. Yes, from White Snake. And Rada Lease, who's married to Howard Lease from Heart. Right. Now. Yeah. Hope DeBoers, who's one of our, I love you, um, our C-Hack group. And mm. a couple other girls. Oh, Karen. Who won't talk to me for some reason now. Uh, and... Uh, Sure. <laughs> I can't say her name. One of the the mob daughters. Uh huh. Okay. She, her 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 last name ends in a vowel. Yes. 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 Right. Yes. Now you went into stand up yourself. Yes, I did. And that's when we met. Now that actually ties back to this town because when right. my sister started ditching me on the belly dance shows, Bonnie Sachs, who was our producer at the time. Love Bonnie again, Mindy, David, Suzanne. Oh, and gosh, her, her Suzanne's daughter, Faith. Oh, drop dead gorgeous. Right. It's amazing. Um, Bonnie had said to me, you know, your your sister's ditching you a mm -hmm. lot, so you need to figure another act out. And she's like, well, why don't you be a comic? Because I did so many stupid impressions. Right. And I mean, to me, they were such like, as share i'm not i can't can't do share now i can't even do most of these impressions anymore i would do belinda carlisle oh, really? sam loved that one um because i can manipulate my yeah. voice with ethel merman 
love Ethel Merman, yeah. but I had like a repertoire, yeah. <laughs> you know. So Bonnie says you should be do start doing stand up, and uh, when I saw Sam and the Outlaws of Comedy, which is Carla Bowman, Mitchell Walters, mm -hmm. Alan, my ex husband, and uh, a light bulb went off in my head. Mm -hmm. I mean, these people are talking about their, you know, lives. My life is way more dysfunctional and interesting to me. <laughs> so, so did Alan start writing with you? No, no, nobody started writing with me. Nobody, nobody. You, you no, did, you did it yourself. No, yeah, I, I, as you know, I flew very low under the radar. Yeah, um, that's how we met. Yes, <laughs> I love that place on Balboa. I remember oh that yeah, those oh. there are a couple places that were just so bad. Yeah, yeah. But you were so nice to me, and so we're, we're like we had like a little crew, yeah, of dysfunctional kind of yeah yeah outcasts. But it was fun. I thought it was nice. Yes, it was the outlaws of Balboa, Balboa Avenue. And what happens is, is like you know, yes, we have to go through this, and this is what makes a comic to me is like the struggle. Sure. You know. So do you think it was harder for you? Yes, it was harder for me because it was. Uh, they said, you know, grudges that right. had nothing to do with me. Right. Or my act. Right. Um, there are, you know, people are going to go, oh, boo-hoo, she had it so hard. It's it, We all had it hard. Right. That was just my struggle. Well, let me ask you this. When did you know you had found your voice on stage? Um, I think when I started getting more physical and out yeah. of my head. Is there a specific set that you remember that? Uh, yeah, remember? yeah. Actually, there was. It was. It was. It was, and it go, ties back to Vegas again. Um, this is your town. Yeah. Well, very much so. I mean, I I have a love hate relationship with this town, but I do love my friends that live here. They're very very good friends, and um, a few of my friends were in Los Angeles, and I was performing in the OR at the Comedy Store. The original room. Yes, the original room, which is a great room. It's a great room. I, I'm a comedy insider, so I know what um, that is. But yeah. yeah. It was the first time I ever put makeup on when I did a set. And you're not f fond of makeup. No, I did. I always wore a baseball cap, and I didn't wear any makeup. Mm -hmm. I looked like a little skater girl with a bunch of diamonds. Um, but I didn't realize the makeup would accentuate the expressions. It was a whole different world. Right. And my friends were in the back, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so great. I am like, I had to work this much. Right. It, everything just flowed. Yeah. I mean, the material was solid. Right. As I said, I, want, I did not want, you know, physical stuff, you know, female issue, you know, this right. being the distraction. The material had to be strong. But once I put the makeup on with the material, it was like, oh my gosh, this is so much fun. And my friends got to witness that time. I'm not even sure if they really know that that was a, a, a very important set. And you could, you could feel the buzz in the room. It was amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. I actually was like, I did it. And uh, But you haven't done comedy in a while. Why did you give it up? No, I haven't done stand-up in a while. Um and that's kind of a sad story. Not that you've given it up, but why are you taking a hiatus? I, I took a hiatus because uh, my mother, five years ago, my mother got was diagnosed with terminal cancer. Oh. There was no one to take care of her. Mm. And I pulled a forest gun, but I just picked up and ran. So, and every, every day my mom, or every night, my mom would say, are you going back up on stage? Because... And she's a she's a showgirl, and she's the one that put you on stage at two years old. Yes, yeah, her life was show business. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm really thankful that you know she's a wonderful, wonderful mother. Um, so, she, it in she, I always said, Mom, no, I'm not going on stage tonight. No, I'm not going on stage tonight. Then she passed away, and I just fell into the abyss. I've mm -hmm. never felt pain like that. Yeah. You know, and I better be careful because I'll start bawling. <laughs> but in a way, I'm like, you know what? I have to carry this on. I have to keep doing this because mm -hmm. this is what my mom did. This is what my mom loved. But as soon as I got my hands on the, the technical equipment, because mm -hmm. my mom was a little bit of a mad scientist with equipment. Right, right. 
and uh, I, I, I found myself again, in my the, the artist in me again. And that's this equipment here. Yes, here's my mic. This is. Oh, I've actually become a sound engineer too. Look, for, and the the podcast name is Dealing with Las Vegas. Dealing with Las Vegas, and your co-hosts. My co-hosts will uh, be my grammar school uh, square dancing partner, Mark Thompson, and husband. Yeah, that's 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 a great story. Yeah. He was from Wisconsin, a little geeky kid, and I, he was the only one who knew how to square dance. He just graduated from like Square Dance Academy in Wisconsin. Right. So the square dancer and the belly dancer. Yeah. Yeah. And it all started in gym class at Harvey Don Darrow. And we were actually, the, our house and our, uh, Mark's parents' house is actually still in the same neighborhood we grew up in, which is definitely not the middle class neighborhood it once was. It's very much like the barrio. Um, but I'd rather live in the barrio than the ghetto. Right. It's a, it's got flavor here. So you're going to be broadcasting live from the barrio. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Our podcast is about Las Vegas for now. Mm -hmm. And it's by locals for everyone. Right. I still feel that there's a lot of people interested in the business of Las Vegas casinos, uh, you know, also finding a decent restaurant that's not in a hotel, good mm -hmm. luck. Right. Um, and I'm a foodie. Yeah. So we're going to have people reviewing things, uh, places, um, sometimes concerts, and some of the reviews are going to be shorter than others. It, there's uh, going to be some storytelling, about but this is a beautiful city. It is. People don't really know about, really know about uh, Mount Charleston. Mm-hmm. Pahrump is actually really fun now. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I, I went yeah. to a winery down there. Love. The they have wineries in Pahrump? Yeah. I didn't, get, I didn't get past the whorehouse. <laughs> There's, again, a lot of Vegas lore. Yeah. I can just imagine you could do a whole month on Circus Circus alone. Oh, my gosh. Me personally in Circus Circus... I can't even tell you how many, like, it, it, like chase scenes. Because it used to be you could cut through the casinos. Right. And um, when we were growing up here, there was the west side, and then there was, like, the east side. Right. And it didn't matter which school. Like, you, maybe, like, one high school hated the other high school. But when it came from, like, if those kids from that area were coming over here, we all, like, banded together. You had your oh, turf. Oh, yeah. We had, like, fights in the desert. Right. Ooh. You know? Oh, yeah. We're like, fuck! <laughs> like, we'd all drive out to the desert because the cops can't get out to the or back then they, they could get out. out yeah 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 no more wow those are the days. those are the parts i miss and uh we can go on forever but one last question yes um was uh, I, I i'm assuming yes but was your mother aware of the successes you've had in show business and was she proud my mother is always she's she was always my biggest cheerleader uh my mother is very aware and I think she it was kind of per usual in her in her mind because she did know the success that my sister and I had prior to Sam mm -hmm. so sometimes when like people would diss us or something I'm like do you know who I am I'm Princess Precious obviously <laughs> you know, silly <laughs> you know <laughs> because it's just so silly uh, we were on the Mark Griffin show, my Douglas show. I won the Gong show. My sister ditched me. I did. My I, my mom. Uh, what I think would be really would be proud of this. <laughs>